We are leaving tomorrow and we have a ton of stuff to do before we can leave. So today is going to be dedicated to just getting everything absolutely 100% ready to go. And I'm really excited. I believe it was Mark Mayhem who, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, who uh, suggested that we get one of these egg cookers called uh, Cuisinart Egg Central. And so just so that we can have like quick snacks and quick protein while we're out, I'm going to be hard boiling about 24 eggs right now. And it's super easy. I just filled uh, using the measuring cup here, I filled it to the hard boil point in here, in the bottom. And now, I put this little doohickey on here. Once I've rinsed the eggs, they can all go in there. All I do is cover them with this and hit the on switch and wait for it to beep. It's really quite cute. We only got one crack this time, which is awesome. I'm just putting them in ice water now so that they cool down and stop cooking and it makes it a lot easier to peel them later. This was one of our wedding gifts, um, this food saver, and it's super easy. So all I have to do We went and got a bunch of food today from the supermarket. And this is gonna help it uh, keep for a nice long time. And it also makes it take up less space in the freezer. and then a layer of ice. And that'll help keep all these meats extra cold. So we're kind of layering them in a way that we'll get some variety because we're gonna eat from the top. So as the ice goes melting, we go eating. Surprise! Yeah, so we were gonna head to Bermuda tomorrow, but we're not anymore. <laughs> so we were looking at the weather because we're leaving, we are leaving tomorrow in the morning. And we're looking at the weather and it was going to be okay heading to Bermuda and then part way through the trip a giant massive storm formed 
And so the weather forecast. we are so sick of watching these storms keep us from going on our trip that we are changing pace a little bit and going to the Bahamas. Yeah, so instead of heading east towards Bermuda where there's all these storms, we're just going to head south where they're not having all these storms. So we'll be able to spend the winter in the warmth. Yep. And come spring, when we are all Bahamaed out, we will head out to Bermuda and then across to the Azores and do everything as planned. So yep. we're still doing the trip. We're just adding on a piece in the beginning. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, you get in a bus and it's going to a city and it makes a stop along the way. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> but this is super exciting. Yeah. And uh, now we won't have to be in Bermuda and the Azores and crossing the Atlantic when it's freezing. Yeah, we'll be able to do it in the spring and summer when it's much better weather for that. It makes a lot of sense. And in the meantime, we'll be chilling in the Bahamas, exploring, showing you guys awesome footage, and having a great time. Yep. going. We're going two knots, but we're going. It's really cold this morning, uh, which makes me all the more excited for the Bahamas. And then maybe we'll get sleep tonight. Maybe. I don't know why but I haven't been sleeping for the past like four or five nights. It's not nerves, it's not anxiety, I don't know what it is. It's one of those things where your mind just races all night. Uh, you're just lying there, eyes wide open. So it's been frustrating, but maybe now that we're actually going, I'll, I'll get some sleep. Who knows what was causing it. So I haven't been sleeping much either lately, but my reason is, uh, so we were here, there was really nothing to do, so we'd end up watching movies till late, and then in the morning, we'd sleep in to get our eight hours of sleep. So our schedule kind of got off, and then as we were getting close to the date that we were going to depart, I was really nervous because I was looking at the weather and I was worried that we were going to get caught in something horrible on our way to Bermuda. So I was really stressed out with that. And then we changed our plan, now we're heading to the Bahamas. So last night I was so excited I couldn't sleep. So at 6am I just got out of bed, it's not that I woke up because I didn't really sleep much. So I figured let me just get out and at least get the boat rolling. So we did finally untie at 9am because we went to bed at like midnight or one, uh, getting stuff put together and put back. So, uh, yeah, we're finally on our way. I'm really looking forward to the fact that every day we're going to be heading due south, and as we go clocking off the latitudes, it goes getting warmer. So <laughs> that is really exciting for me. People have asked this in the comments. You've mentioned why are you guys always bundled up, and the answer is because it's cold up here. And no, we don't like that. And yes, we want to be where it's warm and comfortable to be sailing. So off we go to the Bahamas. For nine years, I've been dreaming of doing this. And today's the day that we head off to the ocean. 
So I am so, so excited. Uh, there's pretty much no wind right now, so we're motor sailing at 2.6 knots, which is actually pretty good speed for right now. <laughs> uh, it's one of the highest ones we've hit today. So it'll take us forever, but we will eventually get out to the ocean, and then we'll just be out, and it's just going to be so awesome. I'm just so happy and excited. I can't even put words to it. It's so much elation. Would you like to say anything? I'm excited too. Right now I'm reading because there's nothing going on. Nothing at all. You can see the surface of the water is really smooth. There's some ripples and some swell and honestly those are all just wakes from other boats but no wind. So we're going along really slowly. Sometimes a little puff of wind will come at us and then give us a little bit of a push. So that's always helpful, but for the most part, it's just a real slow go. While we quietly ghost along under mostly motor power and a little bit of current and no wind, <laughs> I decided to give you guys a little deck tour of how we prepared the deck for our ocean voyage. So let's start on the port side. So on this side, we have one of the flexible solar panels and it's in the shade, so it's not doing much. And then further forward, we have my bike, which is tied to the flag halyards, hoping that it doesn't go overboard. And if it does, there's a little line to it so we can retrieve it. And then we have our downhauls and our reefing lines for the head sails. They're led back to this area. So pretty much from here, I have access to the jibs downhaul, the jibs reef line for the tack, and then the staysails downhaul and the staysails reef line for its tack. So with those guys, we can reef from back here at the mast where the winches are, and we don't actually have to go up to the forepeak. So we have some extra diesel that uh, some neighbors that we had picked up in the Indian Ocean and weren't going to be using for a while because their boat's going up on the hard. So they gave us 20 liters of diesel. So we're carrying it simply to use in the heater at some point when we need it. And then... Uh, we also have one of our inflatable fenders, the only one we carry, and it's simply there in case we need to throw one fast because it weighs nothing, so it's easy to manage. And we have one of the super awesome but very heavy rope fenders that we have, along with this giant sculling oar that I made, which serves as an emergency tiller and pretty much nothing else. And then we have our fisherman's anchor, which is for rocks or weeds, because that's where it excels best, where our other anchors don't do so well in those conditions. And then up here, we have the bow. So the anchor, I pulled it up all the way, that way it wouldn't uh, slosh around, because we're not gonna be anchoring anytime soon. And uh, it's got a little bit of Chesapeake mud to come with us. Now let's look at the other side. So we have two dock lines that I haven't put away yet, and another rope fender. And then over here, we have our grill for cooking. And then this is Maddie's bike in a bag. So I put Maddie's bike inside its bag, that way it doesn't get as exposed to salt, so hopefully it doesn't rust as much. And I tied the bag to the lifeline, so if, in case it gets blown overboard, uh, we can hopefully retrieve it. And then this is an inflatable raft that my dad gave me, so in case we need to get a dinghy out and for whatever reason we don't want to have to untie this behemoth and flip them, we don't have to. And then this is our storm trysail. We call them PJ, because it's our boat's pajamas. We put them up at night when we heave to. I haven't rigged them onto the track yet. He has his own dedicated staysail track that runs right up next to the mainsail. Uh, I haven't put it up yet because it's super calm, as you can see, and it's supposed to be like this for a while. And then heading back, we have another giant behemoth of a fender. Now, well, you guys might be wondering why on earth carry giant heavy rope fenders. If you look here, you can see that it's pretty flattened out and there's just a little bit of wear on it. This is after a couple weeks of pounding into a piling. Uh, so we just left it there and we didn't have to do any fender boards or anything else to worry about protecting ourselves from that horrible piling. So they're very rugged, very tough, and also very heavy. 
So you want to put them exactly where you need them and not move them too often. And then back here we have the lovely Maddie reading her book. There's a couple reasons we chose today to set out. One was the winds were going to be light, which we knew, but that also meant we weren't going to freeze to death with wind chill. And another reason is there's a high pressure system over us. So as you can see around me and everywhere, there isn't a cloud in sight. That means that our solar panels are going to produce as much power as possible to keep our fridge running, the batteries charged, and everything else. This is really important because since the winds are light and we're motor sailing, the solar panels in the back are actually charging up the motor bank while we're using it. So it's not really depleting it as fast. So it all adds up to giving us the ability to motor sail out of here and know that we'll be able to recharge the batteries in a couple days simply by not using the motor anymore and letting the solar panels do their thing. And then when the wind picks up again, we'll be sailing and the prop will start spinning and regen and give us power that way as well. So it's pretty slow, but we knew what we were getting ourselves into and we chose this way to avoid freezing to death. As we sit out here with no wind, as we slowly motor with the current at a speed of three and a half knots over ground, I'm going to take this opportunity to rig up our storm trisole. So it runs on its own independent track here and I'm gonna get all everything set up so that way should we need it, which I highly doubt we'll need it today with these conditions, all we have to do is raise it tired and up it goes. the trisole all hanked on so its hanks are ready to go up and it's tied down so it won't accidentally go up and then the sheets are attached and a really nice thing about having this haul upside down there's two ridges so we can keep one set of sheets and the other set so when we actually rig it what we do is we actually uh, run one sheet down to one side and then the other sheet goes over the boom and to the other side and then that's it uh, you drop the main, and then you hoist the trisail up its own track, and you're sailing on the trisail. I had predicted that we would not, in fact, make it to the ocean uh, today. I didn't share my prediction, in case I was wrong, which I hoped I would be. <laughs> but she was right. But I was right. <laughs> yeah. There was no wind. No wind at all. We ended up sailing a total of like 20-some miles and making 16 miles south. So... Not much. We needed to do, or we still have another 16 miles to go to get out of here. So, that. So tomorrow we'll get out because we have all day. So now we're going to eat some dinner. And go to bed. And go to sleep very early because we're tired. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we finally go under the Bay Bridge and out into the ocean where we are immediately greeted by dolphins and later on, we eat some corn. Thanks so much for watching, and we hope that you will like this video and subscribe to our channel for uh, updates on our adventures. And when you subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell. That way you'll get notifications as soon as the next video is uploaded. Thank you so much.